Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. Thanks for tuning in today. As you can see behind me, I have a lot of packages, a lot of boxes here, stuff from Amazon, stuff from a variety of places. So what are we gonna do with this stuff? My goal is to build the ultimate motorcycle toolbox or toolkit or race box, whatever you wanna call it. So with the Moto box and the Boxo sort of kits being seven to eight hundred dollars, I wasn't really sure if that was getting the most for my money, or maybe I was getting tools that were fancier than I really needed. I don't know. I just didn't really want to spend that much money, or I had a problem plunking down that much money. So seven to eight hundred dollars seemed a little bit high, or was it? So what I did was research what I needed. I went over all of my resources, including Amazon, some of the companies that I deal with, that I have wholesale accounts with from my business 5X Racing, and Rocky Mountain ATV, Motorsport, just all of these places, and really looked at all the stuff they had, and put together some idea lists, and things that I saw that jumped out, yeah, I might need that. So this culmination of boxes back here is what I ended up with. So let me uh, go over these things that I got with you and explain them a little bit in my attempt to put together the uh, ultimate moto box kit or quick response toolkit for uh, my vintage motocross racing. Now this part's very important. I'm going to disclaim right now that I'm not an expert at this. This is not a must have list. This is my list of things I felt I needed for my vintage motocross racing season. So there's going to be some things in here that probably won't work for your bike or things you might not need as they're geared for a vintage bike and maybe even some things thrown in for go-karts. So with that, let's see what I got in these boxes. Okay, so I have everything I'd like to put in my roll around pit box on the table. That doesn't mean I'm going to fit it all in there. So uh, obviously I have, you know, multiples of some stuff up there I'm not going to fit in. And I know all this is not going to fit in. So what I'm going to try to do is get the essentials in there first, kind of organize it out. But I want to go over what I felt would be applicable to my race weekend racing the uh, vintage RM250 over here. Very simple, very basic bike. Um, that's how they were designed. And 
there shouldn't be too many tools needed, special tools at least. So what I'm going to do is go over what I got here and um, why I've chosen this stuff. And uh, some of it's spares uh, for my bikes, like the brake lever, the chain, front wheel bearings, brake shoes. Um, you know, you got stuff like hoses and um, obviously spark plugs. These are things that you're going to want to bring for your bike that are specific to your bike. I got rim strip, I got tubes for the tires, and um, you know, that's uh, those are specific things like vent caps, just common things that might get lost or you might need or somebody else might need during the course of the weekend. Um, so those spares are gonna be for your bike in specific. So of course you're gonna know what you need and um, definitely for my vintage bike, spark plugs and tire tubes, uh, you know, just simple things like that, chain. You know, I don't anticipate like a major component failure to happen. And if it does happen, it'd probably end my weekend anyways. So I'm not gonna bring a whole another bike. Uh, so, you know, your spares are just kind of like emergency things. Like if you break a, a brake lever off, you know, you wanna have something to throw back on there just to get through the weekend. So let's go to the tools and what I, uh, have chosen. So first and foremost on the right side, I have a torque wrench here. This is a 3 8 torque wrench, just a GP from Harbor Freight. I wouldn't uh, bet your life on the torque it provides, but it'll um, it'll do for the track. Of course, I have uh, some cheapy metric open-end box wrench it's here. It goes from size 7 to 19, but not every size. Basically on a bike, you're, you're going to look at 8, 10, 12, 14, and 17 usually. So that's uh, it just covers all the bases there. This is a kit I bought from Amazon, Lexavon, I guess. It's, you know, just whatever. But uh, it's Torx bits. So these aren't something that's going to be on every bike. But I also have the Husqvarna EE5 that uh, Renan rides. So those use Torx bits most of the time. And then we move up here. I have a basic voltmeter. This one also does does ohms and you know a multimeter I guess I should say. Here I have a spark plug wrench and socket set up. Uh, I really wanted to get a specific spark plug wrench um, but I forgot. So this is just um, an old ratchet I had and spark plug socket. So that's already set up and ready to go. Have some cheapy Harbor Freight metric deep sockets. This is a cool set I picked up from Pit Posse. And it's a, uh, I wanted, always wanted T-handle sets for working on bikes, but uh, I didn't want to buy all separate ones. So I found this ratcheting T-handle and uh, it comes with metric sockets on this side. And on this side, it comes with metric hex head and a Phillips and a flat over here. So I thought that was pretty good. That covered a lot of bases. So between my deep sockets over here and these, I should be okay, except for the huge bolts like the uh, axle nut and stuff like that which in case i just brought this big adjustable so moving along over here it's more of the specialty parts uh this is a pit posse fork oil level gauge and this is to uh check the fork oil in the, the bikes and that's something that that leaks out common so uh, i wanted to have that i just recently bought this this is a uh, six and one spoke wrench so it should cover most all the bases on the spokes to just tighten them up instead of using something like pliers. Here I have carburetor tools. These are carburetor cleaning tools, should I say. And it's basically a variety of little uh, poking rods there to get down into the jets and everything. These go with that. It's uh, more jet cleaning type brushes and everything. A basic little acid brush for cleaning the carb parts. And this um, seven, 16 from the Hilo concept spray is going to be my carburetor cleaner of choice and also I um, have brake clean too that's been my carburetor cleaner of choice but getting back to the tools um, I also have this pretty small number three um, Phillips or I'm sorry number three flat here and this kind of gets to my jets perfectly it plunges down into that jet uh, recess and gets out the jets on the small bikes and even the big bikes too. So also we have a, uh, a bead buddy 
So for changing tires or when you have to take a tire off, this makes holding the uh, the bead when you're putting it back on a lot easier. And this is a cool little um, chain alignment tool that I got from Amazon, super cheap, 10 or 11 bucks. And uh, this is obviously to make sure that your axle and your wheel is correctly aligned and your chain is aligned. I've not had one of these before, but I always thought it was a good idea. And this is a spring puller tool. Uh, this is to obviously pull the springs that are on the exhaust pipe that sometimes are really kind of stubborn to get if you have a needle nose. I'll show you right here. These guys, they're on there pretty tight. So that spring puller tool will make that job a lot easier. I have a set of feeler gauges. These are more for like four strokes for measuring uh, valve clearances and stuff. I don't have a real need for them uh, on the bike that I'm going to be racing normally, but it's just small enough and, you know, something nice to have in the box. This is a grunge brush. This is for cleaning the chains. It's a really handy tool. Of course, I have a set of tire irons. If you ever have to take off a tire at the track, you're going to need that or else it's not going to happen. Uh, electrical tape, no brainer. Uh, this is a snap ring plier, just a cheap one, had laying around. This is a little ball peen, sort of mini sledgehammer kind of thing. It's pretty cool in case I got to bang something back in or whatever. Um, over here, a razor knife, obviously. And uh, going back, I think that's about all the specialty tools I have. This other little pocket screwdriver is really small, and it's a double screwdriver so it has a small flat and a small phillips those are kind of handy for like carburetor work and that's about it wire strippers over here small gauge wire strippers and then we have uh, of course the more standard tools a uh, set of side cutting pliers don't know if i'll need these but they're kind of nice at times i'm an electrician by trade so i always like having one of those of course um some screwdrivers so I didn't I just picked out the junkiest ones in my box that were laying around because at the track I imagine stuff's gonna get lost so I don't want to lose my um, expensive screwdrivers that I have at the shop but basically one Phillips that's really long a flat that's pretty general this one looks like it's got a little bit of a warp tip so you can use it for prying stuff and uh, a smaller gauge Phillips here. Ideally, I would want to have JIS equipment because I work on Japanese bikes most of the time, um, but we'll just make do with what I had. And I might throw another smaller flathead in the box here. I just realized I could probably do with the smaller flathead in between this one and this super small one. Of course, I have some um, tongue and groove pliers, commonly known as channel locks and vice grips these are big if i can fit them in i'm going to bring them because these can come in handy needle nose pliers always a use for those and uh i think that's it on that side over here i forgot about these i think these are called hemostats i don't know why but most people call them roach clips these are uh, super super handy for holding something like a mini needle nose plier and they lock so you can clip something and hold it probably why they're called roach clips then of course some spares this is um some just bailing wire this is like the stuff you use to put your grips on and in an emergency probably hold some things on there and uh, over here there's my assortment of liquids um always like to have some hand soap this is not actually bell ray bike wash but this is total wash off-road wash from WR Performance Products. This is a really, really great cleaner. And I also have the WR Foam Cleaner solution here. And then I have some Maxima Spray-On Oil, air filter oil. Uh, of course, got some Loctite. Got a small funnel in case I need to do something with brake fluid. Brake fluid's another good fluid to have I didn't even think about. Uh, I got a little razor knife here. And if I can fit it, over here, I have some silicone lubricant. This is like dielectric grease, basically, uh, in case one of the electrical connectors is doing something wacky. This is just filled uh, with the foam cleaner. It was an old K&N air cleaner, but I like the spray nozzle on it, so that works good for that. 
Uh, of course, some of the bigger items I hope to be able to fit in there, but won't be a deal breaker if I can't. I'll probably just throw them in the truck because this is a um, portable jump starter. Uh, this is a very, very cool device. So you can use it to charge up phones and everything, or you can use it to jump start your car. We'll be doing a separate review on this because I really want to put this to the test to see if that actually can start a car because fun fact, last time we went to a vintage race, our truck battery went dead for some reason and we had to get a jump start. So thought that would be a good thing to have. And then of course, this is the um, smart air pump. It's basically a portable air pump, battery powered air pump. And um, that's kind of cool. It's something that you probably should keep in your car anyways. Uh, I don't know if it's got enough to fill up a tire from flat to full, but it's got enough to probably get you where you need to go and perfect for motorcycle tires, which offer road tires, you're only talking about 10, 15 PSI anyway. So that'll work good for that. Up here, this uh, is an air fork tool for the Husqvarna EE5. No need to open it, but it's important to have. And of course, everybody should have a vast assortment of tie wraps because they just come in handy so much. So um, I think I covered everything. You might see some other things on the bench that aren't relative but are just in the picture. Uh, beer koozies are always good to have. Um, this is an hour meter that I bought and put on the bike. It's not going to be part of the spares package. But um, I think that's about it. Uh, you see like some grunge buster chain cleaner back there but um the 716 is actually going to be probably the chain cleaner of choice so these are like i said things that i'd like to bring but not sure if i'm going to be able to fit them in so that is the goal is to try to fit all of this stuff into my to-go box Okay, as you can see, the bench is almost clear back there and I got everything that I think I needed, but I had to leave some things out into the box. Uh, so like the torque wrench and uh, you know a couple of other things that I feel that maybe I can borrow from people there. Um, so I got just about everything into the box and I'm pretty happy with it. So we're gonna go out to the track and we're gonna test out how it works in the field. Just to note, I'm a perfectionist and I wanted everything to fit like a Tetris game, so it took me a long time to do it, but uh, you can kind of just throw everything in there and go. So um, it's up to you, but I like it neat and the stuff I'll use the least on the bottom, the stuff I'll use the most on the top, makes sense to me. So however you do it, it's up to you, but for me, I was kind of a perfectionist in it and uh, set it up exactly how I thought I'd need it. So let's see how that all works out. <laughs> 